Hey everybody and welcome back to another Crank and Packs video. I am your host, Miss Rivers. That's right, we're back again with some original Innistrad. We're gonna look at some spooky art today, hopefully. Maybe. Let's open Liliana last. How about that? Liliana is the last pack for us. Let's put this over here so it's just in shot. There it is. And let's get right into it. We got the Blood Gift Demon, I think that was that what it was? The Blood Gift Demon on the front there? I think that's what that guy was. I don't remember. This has been brought to you by one of my wonderful patrons, Brad. He sent this box over to me so that we could open it together and enjoy it and basically just take in the art and enjoy it. All of the cards from this box are going back to Brad because they are his. He just shipped me the box to allow me to open it so that you could all enjoy it with us. So let's get right into it. We got claustrophobia. And you can see like the nails here. So, like, the camera's, like, in the wall, I guess, or, like, it's, like, a cross-section. They've cut that, like, wall off, essentially, so that you can see those nails, which is kind of interesting. Because um, those nails wouldn't be in there. I guess unless they were nailing something to, like, the top of the coffin or something. I don't know. But ridiculous art there. And, of course, it says, six feet of earth muffled his cries. My goodness. My goodness. Ooh, one of my favorite arts from the set here. We got Frightful Delusion. Look at that. Gorgeous art. Just gorgeous art. And it says, Whether he actually exists is the in question, but the terror she feels is excruciatingly real. We've got a Ashmouth Hound. This was a great card in Limited back in this set, mainly because of its ability here. It says, Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature it deals one damage to that creature so it could trade up it was a 2-1 for two mana that could essentially kill something with three toughness very very good for early drop aggro decks and it says its fiery paws make it easy to track which is very make it easy to track which is very useful when you want to go in exactly the opposite direction fair it's fair it's a fair statement we've got the traveler's amulet here Again, very gothic castle in the background here. Very nice. Don't know why it's like laid on a stump like this. Don't know if that's like some sort of part of a ritual or something. Who knows? It's possible, I guess. And it says, The rider set off in the eerie mist, swaddled in armor and laden with amulets. Amulets, of course, bringing you protection and luck and all that good stuff. We've got a harvest pyre next. Again, you can see just a giant, giant pyre of wood that they've built. And specifically to burn corpses. Corpses destroyed by fire form the most destructive geists. Um, so uh, maybe they were burning them on purpose to make geists that were destructive? I don't know. Mulch was a great little card in this format as well in Limited because it was a two mana uh, card that would reveal the top four cards of your library, put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. The main reason this was important is because there was a lot of things that dealt with like number of creatures in your graveyard or like returning things from your graveyard or like dredging things basically. So um, it was a very, very good uh, card for that in limited because it would allow you to dump things into your yard to then use them so it's essentially like a secondary hand right very nice and of course it gives you a bunch of land which is always good as well if you need it early game we've got a smite the monstrous here little like moonbeam blowing a hole through this zombie i guess is that a zombie it must be a zombie right don't know why Moonbeam would be murdering a zombie, but it says, Though the old holy wards and roadside shrines have begun to fail, faith in Avacyn still holds true power. So I guess it's like the idea is it's like because it's like Avacyn's will burning the zombie from the moonlight, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, cool art. Very cool art there. We got an armored scab. You can see here there's a bunch of corpses. It's just kind of like, you know, don't want to meet this thing on the field of battle, apparently. Because, like, I mean, look at all these people who literally made for battle. See? Look at that. Just, just the flavor text tells you everything you need to know about this card. Butcher's Cleaver. It's a good one. Don't know what that is hanging in the back there. Looks like some sort of, maybe like a rabbit or something. with, But it doesn't have any ears. I don't know. I don't know what that is. And it says, outside the safety of Thraben, 
there is little distinction between tool and weapon. It's fair. I mean, as long as it's sharp and it cuts, right? That's what matters. First uncommon here, Invisible Stalker. Great little card as well from this set. A little 1-1 one, one for 2 mana that has Hexproof and Unblockable. Hexproof and Unblockable. All that concerns me is the vampire's sense of smell and those freezing Nef Nephilian nights. Because you have to be naked, I guess, right, is the, the thing here. Because you, you can see the clothes. So if it's cold out, not going to be great for you because you're naked. But you are invisible. All right, then we've got a Scourge of Gaia Reach. Another, like, crazy... Again, this is obviously one of those geists, right? But it's not a geist. It's a elemental. Don't know why they didn't make this one a spirit, to be honest with you. Since they talked about it with the, the, the Harvest Pyre, right? It makes a geist that's very formidable and forged in fire. This looks like it's forged in fire. Why it's an elemental instead of a geist? Good question. But anyway, here we are. A Scourge of Gaia Reach gets plus one plus one for each creature in your opponent's control. Uh, each creature your or your opponent's control, I should say. And it says, Stensian villagers mourned the loss of human life. Thrabian vampire slayers mourned their loss of living wood. There you go. Now we've got our another, another uncommon here. No, we've got a rare. So that means we have a foil uncommon then in the back of this pack, it looks like. So we've got our manor gargoyle as our rare. Look at the sweet artwork on this thing. That looks really cool. It's got like a whole bunch of like, like fine detail in the stonework and stuff. Very cool looking. Very cool looking. And of course, it says nothing could break it but the fall. So until end of turn, uh, it loses defender and gains flying. And then at end of turn, it loses flying and then it falls to the ground, right? So as long as it has defender, it's indestructible. Which means as soon as it gains flying, it no longer is indestructible. So very good flavor with the way the abilities work on this card. A plus. A plus for flavor on that card. I will admit. Okay, so there's our rare. Then we've got a garbage token here. Look at this. It's just a nice little add card. Then we've got a Hanawir Watchkeep as the flip card from this pack. And you've got, of course, nice little uh, like battlement crossbow ballista type thing. I guess it's a ballista. I guess we would call this a ballista, right? Because it's not handheld. Is that how you di differentiate between a crossbow and a ballista? I think that's basically probably how you differentiate between them. Um, and then, of course, it's a 1-5 defender, and it says, He scans for wolves knowing there's one he can never anticipate. And then the one that he can never anticipate is himself! And you can see like he's ripped this battlement off and is now carrying it in a hand right and it's a 5-5 five five, and it says technically he never left his post he looks after the wolf wherever it goes i mean that's fair it's fair right it's a fair statement to make and then we got our island and then a foil foil pitch burn devils there you go pitch burn devils a great little card from this set as well mainly because it's a five mana three three that when it dies, it does three damage to target creature or player. So now it's probably any target has been errated to, I would assume. And it says the ingenuity of goblins, the depravity of demons, and the smarts of sheep. Here, coat yourself in this burning oil. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Who knows? Nothing could go wrong, right? Nothing could go wrong. All right, what do we got here? Selfless Cathar. A nice little one here we've seen before. Lots of uh, notes here with the Avacyn logo, of course, right? And it says, if I fail to offer myself, we will surely be overrun. My fate would be the same. So this is someone who has realized that regardless of the outcome of the battle, that, he, that they are going to die and therefore uh, might as well sacrifice themselves to try and help the rest of the, the uh, you know, family, friends, township right curse of oblivion this is one of my favorite arts again i have a number of favorite arts but you know how that goes right there's so many cards in a set you can have multiple favorite arts from a set right the reason i like this one so much is because like the the hair basically like just melds perfectly into this wave which is a really cool effect i really enjoy it curse of oblivion of course it's an aura curse it goes on a player and it says the first step to peace is to learn how to forget 
So if you don't learn how to forget, you can never be at peace, basically, is what it's saying. We've got Victim of Night. This is a very bloody card. You can see this person is like basically trying to hold their blood into them. It's not working out very well, I would imagine. And you can see that obviously they were some sort of uh, Avenger of Avacyn or something because their sword has the Avacyn logo on it. Um, and it says, Do not touch a drop. Not yet. I want to watch this so-called Slayer's last cri uh, crisis of faith. Olivia Valderin. Vampires are very cruel, aren't they? Seems that way. We've got Corpse Lunge. Look out! Could you imagine, like, just, like, walking through a door and then a corpse just, like, lunges on you as you walk and you're just like, oh, gosh, and you, like, fall into your house and the corpse is, like, just, like, there with you? And you're like, uh... Uh... Right? No flavor text on this one. Just the ability. So just look, look, look how shocked that guy is. Right? I mean, I would be shocked, too. I would be shocked, too. We've got Geist Flame. This one's a really cool art, too. Look at this. Look at that sword with, like, the... Almost looks like a dinosaur face coming out of the end of the sword, right? Some sort of elemental beast something, right? With teeth and everything. Very cool looking. Very cool looking. And it says, Innistrad pyromancers find their best raw materials in the fury of the dead. So, you know, like they say, you know, the most ferocious geists are born of flame, right? Infernal plunge. Here we go. This is just like, hey, dude, you forgot your parachute. And it's too late. It's too late. Almighty Grizzle Band, scourge of the heedless world, gladly I consume myself for thee. All right? That's how it should have, It should have been... They should have extended the E's on the end there, right? To make it sound like he's falling off a cliff. Right? That's, I think that's the best. We've got the Stromkirk Patrol. Of course, keeping watch over the gates here and of course the full moon is out and that is because these are vampires and they can't be out in the light of day you'd best move along human our palates are far less discerning than our masters so this is like the whole thing in Innistrad is like the vampires are like we only eat the blood of like the palatable which is like you know the the rich and like the you know well to do people of Innistrad Whereas, like, the guards are like, we're not here to, like, the nobles only eat, like, pure blood, right? Like, they only eat the highest quality of blood. We, we're just vampires. We just take your blood. We don't care who you are. We're hungry, right? <laughs> so you got to be careful. You got to be careful around the guards, right? Hence the, the quote. Pitchburn devils again here. Here we go. You know, nice little devils coating each other in oil, right? Very nice of them. Very nice of them to do so. Prey upon. Great little card here. Of course, you don't know who's preying on who, right? Because this is the the werewolf hunter with probably the silver sword and the werewolf coming in. So which one is the one hunting who? Well, that's up to you to decide. You don't find many old werewolf hunters. Holland, Trapper of Somberwald, right? So the quote says that most werewolf hunters are actually young because they end up dying to werewolves, right? So chances are the werewolf hunter is the one that's being preyed on. But at the same time, I mean, you found your quarry, right? If you're hunting a werewolf and a werewolf comes after you, I mean, your job is made a little bit easier, right? First uncommon here is the Disciple of Grizzlebrand. The interesting little, like, head wrap here with, like, the medallion on the forehead, but, like, the, the essentially straps of, like, uh, cloth covering the eyes. Very strange, but very cool looking, right? And again, you can see, like, working at, like, an altar, basically, you've got a horn there and a book. Right, and it says the demon Grizzlebrand dared to stand against Avison, earning him the loathing of thousands and the admiration of a few. So, you know, those people who are like, down with Avison, we don't like her. We've got Galvanic Juggernaut. Cool little contraption here. Looks like it's steam powered, maybe? Uh, but then it fires like lightning, which is like super cool. Looks like it's, like, straight out of, like, some sort of, like, steampunk design of that era, right? Some contraption powered by... Maybe it's even powered by lightning? I can't tell, because it's... Like, there's, like, a little strip of lightning coming down the back there, but who knows if that's what's powering it, or if it's shooting that... If that's just kind of, like, excess that's power... Like, you know, spilling out the back. No flavor text on this one, though. Nice little 5-5. Five five. Then our, our last uncommon here is Bramble Crush. 
again, some, you know, lots of green uh, roots, basically like reclaiming things in this set as well. So you've got like the one that like is, I think it's like a grave bramble, which is like a three, four that has protection from zombies. And it's like, you know, basically just a bunch of bramble that's like overtaking a bunch of uh, graves and stuff. And then you've got this one, bramble crush, which is destroy target non-creature permanent. Um, so it lets you blow up like artifacts, lands, this lets you blow up lands, right? Because it's non-creature permanent, right? It says civilization is fertilizer. Garrick, wild speaker. There you go. And the rare here, back from the brink. This is a fun little card. So again, this is a cool little art here. Oh look, you can see. I don't. I mean, you can't see, but I can see that my camera is actually trying to be like, hey, look, there's a face there. There's totally a face right there. Let me focus on it. So if I move it around, the little box is moving around on the camera. Silly, silly. Look at that though. Very cool little card. And this is a six mana enchantment that says exile a creature card from your graveyard um, and pay its mana cost. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that card. Activate this ability only any time you can activate a sorcerer or cast a sorcery. On Innistrad, death is just a career change. Very cool little rare. Very cool little rare. And then a zombie token and a flip card checklist. And then the actual flip card, which is a reckless waif little you know hanging out looking all like something that maybe they're gonna stab you that's the kind of feel i get out of this it's like a rogue they almost look like a rogue right yes i'm alone no i'm not worried see like they're ready to ready to just stab you all right that's all i'm saying and but then there are one one for one that flips into of course the merciless predator right there it is the same kind of flowing hair is kind of cool Right, like you can see the hair here, it's like kind of like flowy, right? And then here, same kind of idea, that nice like flowy mane from the werewolf. And then of course it says, before she just wanted to snatch your purse, now she'll take the whole arm. I mean, that's fair, right? If she's like, hand over your purse, and you're like, no, what are you going to do about it? And then she turns into a werewolf and takes your arm that was holding the purse. I mean, I don't think you're going to argue with her. You're probably going to yell and scream and bleed to death. That's my guess. That's my guess. <laughs> All right, last pack here. We've got a Woodland Sleuth. Look at that. Checking out how it was killed and what did it. We got some arrows stuck in its neck there, of course. A couple in the chest, it looks like, almost, as well. I can't really tell. Or is that, like, blood burning down the arm? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is right there. It looks like blood running down the arm, almost. And like dripping or like maybe it's something oh it's the little tassels see there's tassels on the other side i don't know what those tassels are like they're obviously just like uh probably like the thread holding the bracers together i guess it must be right whatever uh whatever did this is near death re uh, reversion has not yet occurred be alert we've got a curse of oblivion here again very nice love this art We've got Ancient Grudge. Oh, there we go. Taking out that sweet Avacyn's artifact right there. A little shrine to Avacyn, most likely. If there's anything a werewolf hates, it's a collar. Especially Avacyn's collar. The symbol of her church. Ooh, the Ambush Viper. There you go. Sweet little art here. Shout out to Gabby, right? She's got the Viper Brood. She uses this card as her, her uh, you know, group of people that you know her community basically and that's really cool little 2-1 flash with death touch great little card in limited this card could get your opponent so good two green mana they aren't expecting you to have a flash creature in green right especially that has death touch so very good little card great in limited and of course oh i didn't even we didn't even go over the uh, we should go over the the flavor text right living creatures seldom impress me but i liked this one Uta Falconrath. It's because it's got big fangs, right? Now we've got a manor skeleton here. Again, we talked about this in a previous episode. Why's it got why's it got this candle? One of the answers in the comments was, well, the candle's for your benefit so that you can see it coming. And I went, I don't I guess thank you, right? If that's the case. Thank you, skeleton, for letting me know that you were coming and that you're creepy looking. I appreciate it. Lungs dried to parchment, wheeze blasphemies within a cage of bleached bone. No quote on that one, but there it is. Spidery grasp. Again, 
nice look noble looking person here however webs just shooting out of her fingertips and you're like uh what and not only that but like look at how long that arm and those fingers are compared to the other arm like what's going on there what's going on there that's a that's not natural nobody's seen the lady of of videns videns the lady of videns for years poor dear no companion at all in that old castle Yonda of Gavany. We've got a one-eyed scarecrow. Look at that thing. It definitely only has one eye, but it definitely doesn't look like it would be very friendly um, if it was animated. You would hope that it's not animated being a scarecrow because it should just be like, you know, hanging out. But this is magic, so it is animated. So it's a 2-3 defender. It says creatures with flying your opponent's control get minus one, minus oh. And it says farmhands and priests mutter curses at the ragged thing. It unnerves more than just the crows. Which is accurate. I mean, look at it. Look at that thing. It's very, very weird looking. All right, we've got armored scab again here. There it is. Very nice. All right, built for battle? Yeah, literally made for battle. All those people laying on the beach and stuff. Oh, here we go. Another great card, another great art. Bonds of Faith. I love the art on this card. Just like the chain of Avacyn essentially around this demon's uh, neck, making it essentially like uh, do Avacyn's bidding, essentially. Very cool. Interesting little like way of like saying like, uh, what cannot be destroyed will be bound, right? Oath of Avacyn. So you can't kill the demon because it's a demon, but you can bind it, make it work for you. Bitter Heart Witch. Look at the art on this one. Very cool. Well, like, what's that in the background? There's like an altar there. There's like a head hanging from a tree. My goodness. A lot of, there's a lot of detail in this art. And then of course, no flavor text on here, but it lets you go and get a curse from your library, put it on the battlefield when it dies, right? But it's a one-two death touch. So it's like the idea is that like you use it to kill something big by blocking it, and then uh, you get to go get a curse. We've got a lantern spirit here now. Look at this little guy cool coming out of that lantern very interesting this dude has his sword drawn don't know if he knew that there was a spirit coming out of this lantern before he drew the sword like i don't like why do you just walk around i guess you just i guess in this area it's safer to walk around with your sword drawn at night probably right that probably makes sense um, so this says, bound to the square where she died, she calls out to those in danger, usually scaring them straight into the peril she warns of. Oh, that's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> Look out! Something's going to kill- oh, he's dead. Oh, I have failed again. Well then, boimp boimp, as they say, purify the grave. Ooh, look at that. So here we go, we've got a essentially like a priest of Avacyn or something. Basically, like, jamming uh, Avison's collar into this grave. And you can see all the cool, like, uh, sort of, like, spirity type mana wisps, I guess, is what I would call them. Like, coming out the sides. Spell wisps. I don't know. Like, whatever you want to call it. And you've got the scrolls all over the back, which is really cool. And then, of course, it says, Some priests speak in whispers of the Hell Vault, a silver prison of unpurged evils. Very cool. And then the rare... Hey, look at that. There it is. The blood gift demon. Came out of the wrong pack. You, we opened you first. You were supposed to be in the pack with you on the front. That was how this was supposed to work, blood gift demon. You let me down. But at the same time, here you are. Great little card. Five mana little demon guy. You can see him holding a chalice there. Very cool architecture in the background as well. Very nice. And then, of course, it's a 5-4 it's a flyer that says at the beginning of your upkeep, target player draws a card and loses a life. You don't have to target yourself, but you can, and it's a great draw card mechanic for you, or a great way to, like, mill opponents out, or whatever. Um, he relishes the devotion of his Skurzdag puppets, and their belief that it will earn them immortality. <laughs> Toast to you and your idiocy. That's what, that's what he's saying right there. We got a sweet vampire token there. Look at that guy right there. Nice. Checklist card. And then we've got a Villagers of Estwald. There they are. These guys who look like they're ready to defend the town, except that they're not really ready to defend the town. They're ready to eat the town. Right? You can spot a werewolf-infested town by its lack of butcher shops. Yep. And then, of course, they turn into the Howl Pack of Estwald. And it says, 
Estwald citizens don't dislike outsiders. They taste just fine. You see what I mean? Like, it's just like, hey, you come and visit. Stay a while. Let us enjoy the flavors of you. That would be great. So there you have it, everybody. That was a little art appreciation video of the original Innistrad. We did a, it's quite a bit slower pack opening, I know, but uh, I like to go over the art and the flavor text of the cards, kind of talk about Innistrad as a whole. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Let me know. Um, if you just want to talk about the lore behind Innistrad, please leave some comments. Let me know. I would love to talk with you. Anyway, have yourselves a wonderful day. I will see you all next time. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.